Hello, and welcome to the Project Good podcast. I'm your host, Anne-Marie Hilton. Project Good is a social impact podcast interviewing experts and advocates about the pressing problems that we face globally and hearing how they suggest we move forward in the future. The Project Good podcast is brought to you by Project Good Work. The goal of this podcast is to inspire people and organizations to develop a mindset that can move others to positive action regarding the complex social issues facing people on the planet. For July, we're focusing on the plastic crisis. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Dimple Bihel, an urban and regional planner with a specialized focus on the environment. Ms. Bihel has worked with the government in Odisha and India in the implementation of the state's urban strategy in 114 of the urban local bodies of Odisha. Her work is closely associated with black water and solid waste management and sanitation workers handling waste. Odisha is an eastern Indian state on the Bay of Bengal and is known for its natural beauty, rich biodiversity, tribal cultures, and many ancient Hindu temples. With Odisha's population that's very large, over 40 million people, Ms. Bihal's work was critical to maintaining healthy conditions within the region. She is currently working with the government of Mumbai, focused on waste management and urban flooding. Through her work and long-standing passion for preserving and protecting the environment in India, Ms. Bihal has gained an intimate knowledge and experience with the plastic crisis and is an online advocate and enthusiast, showing the public how she manages waste at home, how to make eco-friendly swaps for products they use, eat vegan-friendly meals, and enjoy nature. Let's get into the interview. India generates nearly 26,000 tons of plastic waste every day, making it the 15th largest plastic polluter globally. The plastic crisis is one of the greatest challenges facing planet Earth. Each year, at least 14 million tons of plastic end up in our oceans, and the consequences for sea life are tragic, from choking turtles to poisoning whales. Also, plastic has now been found in human bodies. Humans consume microplastics while eating seafood, they breathe them through the air, or consume food with trace amounts of plastic packaging. Today we'll be discussing the plastic crisis with Dimple Bihel, who is an urban and regional planner with a specialized focus on the environment. And she is currently working with the government of Mumbai in India. As an urban development professional, Ms. Bihel has a strong passion for conscious living and the environment. Her core interest areas lie in promoting environmental social justice and an inclusive urban development. She likes to create natural and built environments by promoting cities that are environmentally sound and socially inclusive. Additionally, Ms. Bial is a contributing writer for Down to Earth India, a magazine specializing in environmental issues in India and the world, and she is the host of the new podcast, Environmental Outlook. Welcome, Dimple Bihal. Thank you so much, Anne, for the beautiful introduction. Uh, thank you for your time. I'm so excited that uh, we get to uh, touch base and um, and uh, talk about the plastic uh, crisis. And I want to uh, congratulate you on a new um, role that you're taking on um, in mm-hmm. another city uh, with India. Um, you are uh, going around helping the entire country. <laughs> so that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, thank, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Let's Let's see how it goes. <laughs> yes. Um, so before we get into the questions, uh, what inspired you to become an urban planner? Um, a very interesting question. So, you know, I was a, generally a person who would love to interact with people. I was an extrovert. I'm still an extrovert. I, I, you know, generally love to hear the stories of the people, you know, um, previously I never observed the cities and the settlements, uh, how are they, you know, uh, coming up? But with the recent times, uh, when I thought the people people have a huge, you know, contribution in the cities, that is how I, go, I got into urban planning and the urban development sector. So I should say the people, uh, the community, the stories of the community were the one uh, that made me, you know, fall into this course. And because we say cities are all about people, cities are all about uh, the stories of the people. That is why I got more indulged into this course, more, intre- more my interest goes more into this course. 
so that is how it happened yeah and i feel fortunate now to get into you know such a sector such a diverse sector where i can work on numerous issues and which are globally renowned now yes yeah no it is it's really great that you are um you know i i think a lot of people don't understand like uh you know how our waste um really it affects uh all the different things of the environment it's not just uh, i know today we're talking about plastic but it's um so many different things that we don't even think about mm -hmm. um and um you know you're in an area with a very large uh population and so you are uh you know uh dealing with i would say um maybe one of the world's most complex um areas and regions um mm. to touch on that um because of the size of the population and then also um because you know the country the the country has been around for a long time and so mm. there's uh you know a lot of uh different things that are, are in place and a lot of um uh you know i'm sure you're encountering things that uh need uh change and uh the the complexity of dealing with such an issue is not just mm. about it really isn't just uh just about waste it's probably uh you know dealing mm. with so many other things that we aren't even like aware of yeah actually and that was one of the core reason for me you know to get into um uh, more into dig deeper into the environmental sector uh in the urban development because i feel uh in today's cities especially the cities of south asia they are they have a much complex structure they are, they are the dynamics they have these days uh, with the influence of politics governance and other issues like poverty inequality you know uh, there are lot of uh, things coming up and when we talk about environment when these things got come up environment goes on the back seat it, other things comes in the limelight so this has been one of the reason when i realized we are focusing on too much economic development and gdp uh, that we are you know not even focusing on how are we going to look for our environment and during then climate change of course was not a so much buzzword like it is today it was people used to talk about it but cities never knew how to take actions about it so you know uh even though now when we all know climate is one of the thing which is coming uh which is knocking our door we are still not prepared for it we are still you know focusing on our infrastructure developments like anything of course those are important too but how can we you know maintain a balance maintain a harmony with the nature maintain a uh harmony with you know the people around because environment is not just about nature or the natural environment it's all also about the people around you and in the cities when we are forgetting all these things you know we are forgetting about how to treat our environment so this was one of the another reason why i wanted to dig deeper into the subject Yes. And in, in fact, you know, I, I'm sure, of course, uh, you know, everybody in the world has uh, utilized some, uh, you know, uh, plastic items. But because, you know, we are, you know, uh, I would say disconnected from it after we utilize it, of course. Um, can you explain how the plastic crisis is actually affecting the environment and, um, you know, what's the what's the damage that's being done? so and so you know every year around 8 million metric tons ends up in the ocean you know some of it whatever we so generate plastic only 9% of the plastic is getting recycled you know so more than that uh, we don't know where it is really going uh, everyone says the plastic is going to be recycled <laughs> uh the plastic we are using today it is it is we are going to incinerate it we are it is going to be managed uh, we are going to convert it from uh, waste to energy but we really don't know where is where is it really going like since uh, 1950s humans have produced almost about you know 8.3 billion metric tons of plastic and we still don't know where it has been more than 60% of it it's still existing on the earth uh, think about it it's more than uh, uh, it's more than 70 80 years now and we are still figuring out how do we manage plastic 
not just that these plastics are going into the oceans uh, impacting our money marine life you know getting into our biodiversity and impacting of course affecting the our food chain too and indirectly it is coming to us we are eating them when we consume our uh, uh, fish food or chicken or anything it is indirectly coming and impacting our health that is how you know we see uh, these days plastic has come into our body it has come in our lungs it has come into our blood blood stream so this this is how it is doing it is happening not just that uh, generally more of the plastic in india if i talk about it goes into the dumping sites i shouldn't say those are landfills because landfill is a very scientific term which which talks about we segregate the waste and then we manage it but it generally goes into the dumping site because the major thing we don't do is the segregation of the waste so because we don't segregate the waste the methane from the landfills sorry the dumping sites are you know uh getting released the the dumping sites are getting are getting on fire uh they are impacting the surroundings with the p- uh, polluted air so these are the things which are happening around us and uh, very recently like 2 3 days back when i went to uh marine drive uh, in bombay which is a very famous tourist spot i saw there was a there was a garbage patch there you know because uh the thing is we are seeing the city today as a you know um as a sponge of whatever we are doing today uh how is it happening is we are throwing our waste like anything we don't know what to do with our waste we don't know who will be managing our waste we are still not sure you know uh, if this waste is having some impact on the environment so i think the major thing is we all need to think about you know how these things are happening around the environment how it is going to impact us indirectly yeah now you brought up one uh you know really strong point um at the the beginning um when you started talking about uh just uh plastic in general one of the biggest things that you know at least i don't know maybe it's been 20 30 years of this like uh recycling uh campaign has been running around the world um like you know recycle 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 um and uh companies that you know make products on the bottom of these bottles you know they have of now even a uh, you know i don't know how long it's been in place for years um that they have a number system of you know is it recyclable not recyclable and then you know if it is like where you would uh you know uh where you're supposed to throw it away so why isn't recycling taking care of this issue like you know i I know like I I I've seen these campaigns like on on TV and you know in some uh publications that there are always uh you know pushing for you to recycle. So are we wasting our time with the whole recycling? Yeah. So you know and the plastic which came uh, for the first time the man made plastic which has been created I should say the human made plastic which has been created uh in the world it has been created in 1862 and we realized that in 1988 you know that the recycling has to be done and that is when the recycling arrow came into the picture that is how you see more over these days on the pet bottles on different kind of you know plastic packaging uh items that this can be recycled and this cannot be recycled so you know the major uh, hindrance comes from the industries which are uh, which are producing them some of them uh, so generally these plas- these have these kind of plastic have different kind of plastic in it okay so some have uh, some of some of them you don't even know those are existing in your you know lifestyle for example if you are using a non stick pan it has a teflon coating or you are using a nylon rope or, or you are using a polyester fabric on your body you don't even know you know this is this is plastic so uh, these are the things which some of the things which we don't know which carry plastic are not going to be recyclable anywhere else the teflon coating we are talking about uh, on our non stick pans these teflon coatings are going to enter into our body itself these these are going to go in the rivers and the oceans in terms of microplastics 
so you know there is no way for it to be recycled it is only going to come to us coming going to the food chain or impacting the biodiversity around it or the ecology around it so this is just one part another part is uh, the recycling of the pet bottles or uh, uh, food packaging items which we see these days you see many of the people are uh, demanding these plastic bottles because these could be recycled many of the recyclers are recently available they are making the uh, plastic pellets uh, of it and then you are they are also sending into it to the uh, cement industry and that is how it is going it is getting reused but some of our plastic packaging items like uh, a fiber or you know a plastic film thin plastic film which we generally use to cover the our food we don't know where it is going to end to be you know these days i've also seen on the notebooks also the some kind of plastic th- there is one pl- a kind of plastic film on the notebooks uh, over the cardboard you know so we don't know where it is going to going to going to be and you know we don't know if it is going to be recycled anytime soon and similarly the syringes we use in hospitals uh, which are which are getting you know we we throw them in the biohazardous waste but we don't know what to do about it many of them are not getting recycled and uh, the artificial limbs the are you know the switches we say the wire the wire coatings we are using so plastic is everywhere uh, many of it that is why we say it is not getting recycled because we don't know how to do it some of it we know it is it is going but yeah the major problem also happens is how to segregate this kind of waste and how do we go about it so when we are not segregating the waste the challenge comes for recycling and reusing too hmm i feel you know i i guess uh, when i start to think about the problem cuz you know i was just thinking about you know little uh food items and and laundry things but um you started mentioning just uh you know it's almost we're addicted to plastic i would say plastic is everywhere like the, there's no like uh you know from our clothing to uh you know uh, as you mentioned uh, syringes i didn't even i wasn't even thinking about that um it's uh, when i started thinking like <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like if i think through just mm. a regular day of my regular day right um mm. you know how many things that i'm maybe using that are plastic just you know when i get up in the yeah. morning um you know uh and you then you eat you know some some breakfast here you you know maybe you're uh, using a container of milk or mm. juice that's in plastic um mm. you know even even our very cell phones that we all run yeah. around oh my god absolutely <laughs> yeah um you know we're all, uh, and and you know and i know for a fact i i forget where i found the statistics but i know there's more cell phones on the planet than there are people and oh so my god. and so you know just cell phones alone and we are in like there's over 7 billion people so i don't know so tell us you know maybe we have 10 billion cell phones that's a mm. lot of plastic just the Absolutely. cell phone so you know i feel like this crisis is it's it's out of control like you mm. know um like how you know um i guess are there alternatives like how can we how can we start like uh you know taking control of this yeah so you know uh, when we talk about the alternatives we have a few kind of alternatives still available and many of the governments are still looking for it uh, we don't have that ab- available uh, much in the market because the the packaging uh, the manufacturing which plastics uh, comes uh, comes up with it is very very cheap in nature rather uh, the agricultural uh, based uh, plastics which we talk about or any other kind of plastics we talk about good packaging we talk about they are much more uh, expensive in nature they are much more you know uh, expensive uh, expensive and uh, it takes lot of energy to make them so one of them is bioplastics which are made from feed stocks like you know uh, corn starch sugar cane but the problem with them is they won't compost in your backyard they they need they need some commercial composting operations you know although this these are made from the agricultural produce but you know 
uh, it doesn't include the petrochemicals but these have so a uh, high power that you can't even compost it in your backyard and it, it acts as plastic in the landfill or the ocean degrading it very slowly so uh, you know we also need to think about anything if we say it is biodegradable uh, for example uh, any leaf any vegetable or fruit peel also if we talk about them it if it goes to the dumping site unsegregated it is not going to you know decompose very easily so you know this is one of the thing which we still need to think about uh, another thing is um in 1941 like there was a prototype car which has been made of soya bean based plastic so you know rather than uh, rather than just plastic or any other uh, thing so these these were just prototypes they have not been implemented yet you know so because we don't know what to do and how to go about it so like i said uh, paper cardboard glass are more energy intensive if we if we see uh, glass once it is broken of course it can be recycled but you know recycling is more energy intensive and same for paper and cardboard of course it is it is biodegradable but it comes with lot of energy uh, consumption and if we talk about the types of plastics we have these days we have thermoplastics we have thermosets the thermoplastics are the one generally you know who are who are softened when we heat them you must have seen the fa- fabric you are wearing uh, for example a polyester fabric if you are wearing you are heating them and then it is going to change its shape uh, it is going to soften it same with the nylon teflon you know carpet clothes or any other furniture if you have these are thermoplastics so uh, when we talk about thermosets once they are molded they are going to stay in the same shape for example uh, the melamine uh, utensils we use the silicon and uh, silicon vessels we use for the microwave and you know for the switches like i was telling when you turn on the fan you forget to uh, forget to think it is also plastic and you know it is uh, it is not letting you catching the electricity so that is also a good part of it so but we need to think about the single use plastics more yeah now this so this uh so i guess when you mention single use plastics are those the ones that are affecting us more than um i guess all these other things of like uh uh i guess clothing and uh, i know there's a the 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 clothing is a whole crisis of in itself i think they have like a I think I forget which uh, I think I want to say is it Argentina or somewhere in South America they have like where they dump all the clothes or something like that um <laughs> and there's like a you know it's it's like uh it's like a fashion desert they call it um mm. and there's just uh tons and tons of uh clothes um mm. there and so um but I guess uh you know i guess all of it is 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 concerning but the mm. most concerning you would say is the single use plastic and so mm. um how can we as just individuals start attacking that problem mm. so i'll go back a little little go back so in 1965 you know the the plastic bags which came up and you know uh these plastic we n- and we never knew uh, that it is going to create a devastation in future and we, it is going to pollute our rivers it is going to pollute our ecology biodiversity marine life you know and create a pollution urban heat island ma- and many more but in 1980s we uh, we realized that plastic is a problem like i said earlier so uh, in 1980s even though we realized that it is a problem we didn't do still much about it there are still uh, uh, countries like india india just passed the india um, india single use plastic ban which is going to happen in uh, july so there are countries who are taking steps if the bangladesh has taken the steps in 2008 so why the single use plastics are concerning is because we don't know what to do about it after its one use for example the polythene bags which we use and it is very difficult to finger figure out to what we call it as single use for example a pet bottle we talk about in which we drink water uh, for for some of them it it will be a single use uh, we'll drink water and we'll throw it on the street uh, or in the dumping yard 
for some of them people grow plants in that people reuse in some or the other way so that is not single use it people are reusing it because they don't know what to do uh, about it uh, and similar for clothing similar for the cosmetics we use uh, the problem with that is much of that clothing we wear these days is made of very synthetic fibers uh, like very very different kind of fibers which is not going to uh, you know help our body in any or the other way for for example we uh, wear polyester fabrics these days which we feel are very attractive in nature you know uh, which we see generally which we get inspired from the instagram influencers or any other one we see these kind of fabrics are going to good uh, going to do good to your body they are go- good for the fast fashion but in the end polyester fabrics are the ones which are going to stay much more longer than your organic cotton uh, t-shirt although uh, the manufacturing process the water required for the organic cotton is much more but polyester fabric it has petroleum in it because most of the people doesn't know what is in the plastic how it has been made so it is generally made from the natural gas it is generally made from the petroleum like i said uh in uh, western europe and china plastic is made from oil north america and middle east plastic is produced from natural gas using ethane and then ethane crackers happen that is how uh, polyethylene happens and our uh, your clothes your plastic bottles your food packaging comes up so like i was uh, like i was saying uh, for the cotton cloth if you are wearing it it is going to do good to your body of course your body will be able to breathe it like you have uh yeah like you breathe with your nose your skin also breathe with your pores so if you are going to block it uh, with the polyester fabric or with the plastic fiber of course of course it is not going to breathe properly and it is going to get into your body in some or the other way and same for the organic cotton you know that it is it is going to do good to your body and not just that when even if uh, you throw that fabric uh, after it loses its color after it loses its texture or something like that it is going to degrade in the environment but if you talk about the polyester fabric it is not going to do good to the environment too like you said in argentina there are a lot of dumping sites which are happening you know which are having a lot of clothing uh, uh you know clothing dump sites this is because some of the uh, some of the or most of the companies are not even concerned about where their waste is going to end up where their after after the uh, consumers produce the uh, uh, after the consumers consume their products where are they going to end up um that is how you see that and some of some of these companies have also started uh, their you know reusing campaign campaigns and not just that few are the com- a few of them have also uh, a few of the startups have also come up using these uh, uh, using these you know uh, y- these fabrics uh, or you know tires or anything to reuse them so this is how it is happening which the thing which we call it as single use it is currently uh impacting our water bodies it is choking it creating the flooding around the areas in the low lying areas uh it is it has to be like in mumbai it has to be clean every uh, before every monsoon you have to clean those drains from the plastic and the the waste people have people have thrown in the drains otherwise the drains are going to choke the, the choking of drains are going to lead to the urban floods or you know uh you know water logging around the city so it will affect the commute too so it the issue is not just a smaller issue it, it is it is taking up a picture of a larger issue which we have to think about yes you just brought up a point that you know i don't think i think almost no one knows other than people who are dealing with it and and are professionals like you um you brought up the point about the flooding now i never linked plastic to the flooding problems that are going on um mm-hmm. globally um but now it makes uh, makes sense because you know right now i think everybody is just thinking like the the earth has you know um uh turned on us <laughs> because mm-hmm. you know we we've, we've been we've been bad um but they don't understand how i guess how we've been bad they just think like you know from maybe a a you know um 
it, obviously we know we we haven't been doing all the things that we should be doing and then you know um you know there's of course the 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 moral uh, look at things but mm -hmm. now you bring up a very specific and concrete detail that i think a lot of people don't know about how the plastic that we are utilizing is attributing to these flooding problems, especially in the cities. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I don't think anyone, I, I, like I have, um, I don't think I've ever had that uh, said, and I haven't seen that in any like, uh, you know, um, common news area that uh, really would show to people how they are literally impacting the problems that we are seeing globally. Um, and I think that would be something that is uh, is so powerful to show to people that, you know, this bottle of shampoo that you mm. just thought cleaned your hair is yeah. now causing this, you know, devastation in the city. And now, you know, maybe cost people their lives and livelihood. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't think, uh, you know, that, you know, what you have just said is like, uh, you know, put a huge light bulb um, and I think it's something that has to be highlighted because I, that's the thing that um, is a big argument right now with all this, uh, you know, uh, the push of uh, climate change is that there's the argument of, of course, like, you know, one side says, you know, there's climate change and the other people says, well, it might be just a natural thing happening in the earth and it's not really climate change. But this point, uh, you know, brings it to uh uh you know uh, a different perspective and uh kind of proof of how we are um really uh, affecting the planet and um causing the problems that we are seeing so absolutely yes you um, well said you know you well said like the bottle of shampoo we don't know where it is going to go and very less industries or companies tell you to bring the the same bottle again and we'll refill it rather that that comes in the single use plastic too we throw them on the street uh, we don't know because what to do about it and you uh, think about yourself how many shampoos are you consuming in just in a year Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's like, uh, it's crazy. Like, even though we may, you know, die and leave the planet, we leave a long trail. <laughs> mm, absolutely. Absolutely. We have yes. a great footprint on the earth. <laughs> yes. Um, now I wanted to talk about, since you have, uh, you know, you, you specialize in the environment and, um, of course you're working on improving all of these different issues. Uh, one of the things, you know, um, I guess now we kind of understand how plastic and, and sewage is linked um, but um, let's see uh, right now I know before uh, previously this is a little different than uh, your position that you were um, uh, working on uh, or you're working on currently but about uh, like uh, wastewater issues um, I think people uh, that's an issue I think that people are not uh, familiar so mm. how is that um, I guess tied to uh, uh, plastics and uh, the environment um, you can just elaborate a little bit so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if we talk about the wastewater issue it come uh, there are two kind of waters which generally come uh, one is the black water and one is the gray water so black water is the water which we generally uh, flush in the toilet so that's a black water other than the black water everything is gray water for example uh, if you're taking bath the water which is going to the drain it is going to be the gray water same with the kitchen same with anything which we are using water for domestically and it is going into the drain it is it is the gray water so I'll talk about uh, the black water uh, in detail more because I've closely seen how it is, uh, how the things are working around it. So generally, if you see, uh, most of us uh, are really unaware about what are we really doing and where the things are going to end up. For example, if you are pooping in the morning or in the night, you know, we don't know where it is going to go, how it is going to impact the ecology around it. Not just that, what is happening is you must have observed it. your poop. I don't know about the Western countries. I'm not sure about it. But in India, mostly the, there are uh, kind of uh, septic tanks which are there uh, where your poop generally goes and then it goes to the drain. Not whole water, but yeah, some of it. 
so the the extra water goes into the drain and the larger part the scum part settles down so it and then it has to be cleaned you know uh, like every 3 to 4 years and something like that the uh, the solid part which turns out into the soil so when we talk about them uh, generally these days a uh, very unnecessary things which we don't know where to throw is we throw that in the in the shit hole like for example our toilet for example condoms uh, used sanitary napkins we throw them some shampoo packets to uh, some plastics we throw them into the uh, throw them into the um, toilet and then generally because it is also a part of the sol- solid it is is the part of uh, it is a solid part it generally settles down with the with your poop so uh, which is a scum and when somebody has to come and clean it out uh, generally suction suction pumps or it is cleaned by the uh, yeah in india we call it as cesspool uh, cesspool trucks uh, honey sucker trucks so you know these are the ones who generally take out these but you know who comes who comes with that uh, a machine can't operate each and everything right so they comes with a lot of a lot of people comes and operate those and then they have to look into how uh, how the poop has been digested and had had been decomposed uh, in the septic tank itself and that also contain lot of plastic so yeah, some of this plastic doesn't even go to this machine or uh, this honey sucker machine so these have to be these plastics have to be you know uh, taken out by the hands from the uh, from the operator itself or the helper itself who is doing who is doing it and not just that it is it some of it it, it goes into the drain uh, it ha- then the drain has to be cleaned the drain chokes like i said uh, it creates urban flooding uh, water logging around it and similar with the grey water in grey water when you have open drain you throw anything there uh, you throw the sh- at least when you cut uh, you must have observed when you cut a shampoo sachet you cut generally very slantly and then the smaller part which is there we don't know where it is going to go and nobody is going to find it that in the ocean or in the drain we can find the bigger particles the bigger plastics uh, in the drain in the oceans but we can we we don't know where these smaller particles or smaller uh, sachet um, plastics are going so you know uh, these are the things which are going to bother the water our our urban water uh, also and it is going to impact our water security too because some of them uh, basically in india where uh, the sewerage uh, connections are there in during monsoons it uh, during monsoons uh, the grey water or the black water get mixed with the drinking water so it impacts your health too because of its choking because of plastics so you know this is this is how it is happening with the help of uh, when you don't care about where your plastic is really going Wow, I you know, you have put in uh you've made a picture that I can um it's like there's no there's no escape. <laughs> from the, there's no escape from like uh, plastic and and all of these things it's just it's a it's a like continuous cycle and I guess, you know, how can we um you know i guess uh obviously right now um uh, for the people that are going to be listening to this episode um you know uh usually people are uh, that are listening to these things want to be more aware but for the general population that you know may not uh you know care or have as much uh, uh as passion uh, about this issue um even though i believe they should um because mm-hmm. it's obviously affecting each and every one of us how do we start to get people to do um alternative things like um for example like right now because um you know uh you know i've 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 been obviously aware of the uh you know plastic crisis and i you know there's it's almost impossible i think to eliminate all plastics from your life um mm-hmm. but uh you know i've tried to do things myself like you know use a you know a, a bar soap instead mm-hmm. of using a pump soap mm-hmm. um you know um as same for like a shampoo they now have um you know uh Uh, shampoo bar, bars our shampoo bars i guess how do we start to implement and push people 
to really go um, that that way, um, mm. I think it, it mm. requires a, a lot. I don't know. Mm. And you are doing already really good, <laughs> I must say. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I I would say, like you said, uh, there are great examples to switch to. You know, from a pump body wash to a you know to switch to a bar soap or a bar shampoo. So these are a kind of good practices. But you know, um, for Indians and for the people who are uh, going to who want to live re- really close to nature, there are many more alternatives which are available for these products. So in in India, in Ayurveda, there are a lot of things which we can really do for our body, for our you know for our scalp and everything around it. So we don't need much of our much of uh, we don't need the so called much needed products for your body or the spf or something like that so uh, for me what i do uh, is i make my own hair mask uh, every time i have to wash my hair so you know that is like purely uh, zero waste no plastic and everything it is just a mixture of few kind of powders in ayurveda and just i i just apply it and similar kind of things uh, could be done in your areas too when you know something is good for your body for example there's uh, there's one thing called as basin or um, which is good for your body which is which is he- which helps your uh, body to clean its pores so you can you know you can use those kind of powders which you generally used use for eating too um that could be used on your body so there is one funda you can think about if you can't uh, if you can eat something uh, you use only those products uh, the one you can really eat for example you can't eat your spf rated sunscreen mm-hmm. uh, but you can apply it over it on your body so if you can eat something it means that could be applied to your body so this this could be one of the thing which we can take it off uh, another um, another thing you can do is uh, mostly single when we talked about single use plastic i missed to talk about the plastic straws we have every time we go to restaurants uh, these are the your beverages are served with the plastic straws so these plastic straws you know could be replaced by a, a steel straw or any kind of straw which is you know which is which is kind of reusable in nature so you can you can easily carry them uh, carry them anywhere you are traveling to carry your own reusable glass for which you know uh, you can reduce because in india and uh, they serve the juices or the beverages uh, in on the street side the hawkers and vendor they serve that in the plastic okay mm. so uh, for me the best way to do it was to carry my own you know steel cup or a steel bottle you know to carry my to carry and drink my juice in so that was the best i could do and uh, whenever you are going for shopping please avoid um, you know using plastics uh, and you know plastic packaging uh, carry your own bag cloth bag or any other bag which could be reusable even it it is for vegetable try to shop locally because when you go and enter the malls big shopping malls uh, stores even though they provide good kind of good discounts or maybe not uh, they come up with good amount of plastic packaging too so you know to avoid these you may go to the local shops and you know may bargain and then uh, bring your vegetables and fruits at home without uh, carrying a plastics so you know these kind of things you can easily uh, inculcate into your you know um, into your lifestyle maybe reusing the plastics which you already have maybe making a, a bottle garden uh, at home you know you <laughs> reusing the shampoo bottles or you know water bottles or anything so you know the basic idea is if you are not able to use that that plastic uh, please give it to someone for them if it could be reused or re- very recently i got a message some of uh, one of a person had a uh, hangers at their home plastic hangers at the home and that was for ch- uh, a child uh, like for for uh, her children so uh, and like her children as her children grow uh, were grown up and she was like i don't know what to do about it so you know i i told her you know why don't you give it to the orphanage or any other new mom which which might be needing the, this 
because we don't know we we blindly sometime uh, we over consume the things which we don't even need which is not even long lasting for us so when you know we, you have done that uh, i think it is it is the time to make a move and you know shift your lifestyle uh, from that i think the biggest change we can do is not to shift your lifestyle but to change your life in such a way that you live a a very less uh, plastic friendly you know lifestyle matlab very less so that you consume less of course it is not possible for you to you know give up on plastic like 100% it can't happen uh, you can do your really best like you are doing so this is what we all can do yes i think that's uh, you know i think it's important that you know uh not only just uh, individuals but obviously the the companies um uh one thing i i i forgot to ask you before and it was something that you uh, uh kept mentioning each time when it came to um alternative um uh you know uh methods that were you know uh kind to the environment as well as kind to human beings uh mm -hmm. for instance when you were talking about instead of wearing polyester clothing to wear cotton clothing mm -hmm. and one of the things that you mentioned that is is that um is that uh the um uh the creation of the garments of cotton garments is more um uh energy intensive and mm. so i wanted to kind of look at that like um a little bit um now when all these things are more energy intensive is it more is it just because it costs i guess is it costing more money is that why uh i guess uh companies perhaps don't want to invest in it um like that's a, you know that's a question i always have in my head i'm like well you know um at the beginning of time people were wearing cotton clothing and obviously organic clothing yeah. um so um is it just is it is that energy um intensiveness also bad for the environment or is it just because of money so i uh, the answer would be yes and no both because i i would say uh yes because these days if we talk about many industries and companies which are the startups which are coming up these days uh talking about they are making organic clothing or made of organic cotton and natural fibers uh it comes with uh, they say it comes with great cost it might cre uh, it might be like that but uh you know that already fashion industry is a billion dollar industry so you know when we talk about all these things it means lot of profit because everyone these days talks about climate talks about what kind of fabrics you should be wearing talks about your human health everyone should be concerned about what they should be wearing right so these companies have their solid agenda you know to come with such kind of of course eco friendly fabrics but they uh, sell all these things at a premium cost because they know the people who are well known about it uh, who are, who know about uh, climate who know about all these issues in a wider way they have lot of money and they can invest lot of money in it because if you want to save the environment according to them uh, uh the the fashion should come at a premium pr price not at a fo affordable price so you know these are the things which are generally bothering the public more and that is why they are also switching to different kind of fabrics like polyester which is uh, very cheaply available and very easily i i should say manufactured it is not expensive in nature so like i said because uh, the Uh, currently the the demand is coming from very premium segment uh the people who can really afford for the people like a middle class or a low income uh, class the, that person cannot even think about you know what is happening around the globe if that person is happening do you think it is going to um uh buy a fabric which is you know which is which is uh selling at a premium price of course not that person with is going to switch to a polyester fabric itself so you know that is how the chain goes on and on there are very less brands who are giving you know uh, who are giving these uh, fabrics cotton fabric or recyclable fabric at a very cheaper price you know one can really afford it so i should say uh, this this should not be happening because earlier when 
when the cloth industry was coming i think cotton was the one one of the first which came up uh, as a as a garment to wear you know so mm-hmm. earlier that was also very cheaply available but now since polyester and other kind of stuff is easily available in the market people are going to uh, since they have demand it is coming at a cheaper price so if we create a more more demand uh, there might be a case that these organic cotton or cotton fabrics m- might might come at a lower price because if you see in the indian market cotton has and the price of the cotton fabric has increased drastically because in summers itself uh, the price goes on and on you know earlier with the fabric which was uh, which you would be getting for, uh, for you know 100 rupees a meter or something like that but now you are getting for 250 rupees a meter so you know the fab- since the demand is coming people know the premium segment is only demanding cotton not anyone else so that is why it is happening but we need to also be uh, mindful that if you if we if we also need to think and take care of our body take care of the planet we should we should we can make a choice we can make a choice maybe there are bigger brands which are which are selling uh, these products yeah that's uh, that makes a yeah i'm i'm glad that you addressed that um just because uh you know i was just thinking uh, you know everything is just about you know uh, money but now understanding you know a little bit uh deeper um about how everything is uh, kind of working together um yeah hopefully that leads to like a, a push i guess uh of going a little bit of how things used to be in the quote unquote olden days <laughs> mm, yeah <laughs> uh when we were uh you know when we didn't think we were that happy but we really were we were a lot happier and healthier <laughs> mm, yeah absolutely absolutely um i wanted to uh uh let our listeners know about your um new podcast that is launching the environmental outlook podcast um so uh if you would mind sharing a little bit about what your podcast is going to be about <laughs> yeah so so uh the environmental outlook podcast uh we are coming up with it brings out stories uh, from across india on people battling and adapting to continuously changing environment in this era uh we have we'll be talking about you know living a conscious life with more environmental awareness and you know making you think how your t- tiny actions are going to impact uh someone else around you and how it is going to create a global impact so we are going to bring the stories of the community uh, for from them uh, the stories from them which you can learn and you know uh, these will be the people uh, of course we are focusing as of now on india uh, we'll be talking about what kind of emerging environmental risks which are coming up and what are they really doing how, and how can you contribute towards it so it will be very interesting uh, storytelling podcast which you should stay tuned to uh and i'm looking forward to it i'm looking forward to hearing about um you know all the different uh issues and things that you're going to be talking about too um you know as uh you know i'll, I'll be honest i never um i guess I saw myself as uh, uh an environmental activist but when i look back through my lifetime i think it was just incorporated in my life as as a child just because of how my parents thought um you know mm. both of my parents uh uh came from uh farm families um mm. and so uh coming from farm families uh understanding the earth was uh you know essential to survival um mm. so for me all these like things of you know uh uh carrying an extra you know carrying your uh grocery bag your cloth grocery bag or if you forgot your bag use paper um mm. were always uh you know pushed on me but mm. you know as i have um you know gotten to know more and more people in the world um you know uh i guess i i i naively um didn't think that other people weren't thinking about that too um so mm. uh uh your podcast should be hopefully very eye opening to a lot of people about mm-hmm. how they can start taking initiatives um to make changes to 
you know, at least take the baby steps to start making a, a difference in our environment and hopefully um, start contributing to clean up a little bit of this, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, climate change and, uh, you know, global disaster issue. <laughs> Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. Um, now, I just have two more questions for you. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, this one is uh, a little bit uh, to go introspective for yourself. But what's the most uh, interesting or important thing you have learned about uh, waste or uh, plastic issues as someone uh, passionate about the environment? I think I'll, uh, if uh, someone has to implement it, uh, then I should say then the person should start with segregating their own waste. So uh, how what does it really mean is uh, if, uh, doing keeping it very simple. There are two kinds of waste. We have a wet waste and a dry waste. So wet waste is generally the waste which can be easily decomposed um, in the earth. And uh, the, uh, the, the dry waste is the one which takes some time, you know, maybe it, can, it, it may contain some plastic, it may contain some glass. So they, these are the ones generally who has to be recycled. So when you start doing uh, segregation, many countries are promoting it. Uh, India is also promoting, but there are hardly initiatives happening on the ground uh, since people are not aware about it. So I think the the one of the first step, uh, baby step you should take about uh, managing your own waste is, uh, you know, segregating the waste. And if uh, around you, the waste is getting managed uh, in some or the other way, at least uh, try to figure out who is managing it, how it is, how it is getting managed, because, uh, because that is how you will you will answer your own question that whether you should be buying unnecessary plastic in your home. Uh, for the wet waste, wet waste, it's very easy to be since it is very easy to be decomposed. You can you can do composting at your in your farmyard or a courtyard or anything, it is very easy to do. And then you can reuse that for your plants. That's very easy. So, but for the plastics, you may need to rethink where the plastic recycling is happening, what kind of plastic they are taking. If you're an uh, urban local body, which is, you know, collecting your waste, what kind of waste, you know, uh, they are really, they really want to see whether they, they are promoting electronic waste, uh, the bottles they want to see, where, what are they doing with it? So uh, once you get to know that okay, uh, one of the plastic has some solution, you can, you you know, you can continue uh, using that. Maybe reduce it or, uh, you know, it's up to you. But of course, you can't, uh, you can't make your lifestyle absolutely zero waste. So, you know, uh, plastic free or, yeah. So... Uh, this is one of the things which you can do. Uh, composting is another thing which you can do. I think these are the biggest suggestions I have. And for uh, composting, maybe you can see if in a community, in your colony or in your city, uh, some composting thing is already happening. Uh, in some of the cities of Odisha, composting was really happening, but uh, the people were not giving the segregated waste. Then you see there is always a challenge with it. Uh, then you think if composting is happening, the waste is not getting segregated, then who is segregating this waste? Then uh, in India, like there are sanitation workers, of course, everywhere there are sanitation workers who segregate your waste, who manage your waste, you know. And then what are the impacts on your health, on their health uh, are happening because of your waste? So once you start uh, questioning, questioning these, once you start answering uh, roaming around you uh, you can you can easily figure out what kind of practices should you should be uh, doing and uh, you then you will be mindful of your practices yes and I think mindfulness um, in in this plastic crisis is uh, the number one thing that we must all mm. do um, and so since we know that, uh, I guess, plastic is all around us and I guess, unfortunately, also in us, um, how would you say that plastic has become a reflection of uh, our current society and culture? Uh, I think if you if you start comparing it earlier, your parents, your grandparents never used to overconsume things, uh, uh, overconsume things. 
maybe because of uh, maybe because of lesser money maybe because of lesser economic development but the more we are developing the more our uh, power to have money increases and the more money we have the more we are consuming it with the more consumption we have more uh, impact on the planet so you know i think uh, we should be very mindful of all these things and once we are mindful of the people around us will be also mindful of uh, mindful uh, about it so i think uh, we should be very careful about uh, the beautiful tv ads which talks about you know uh, it is eco friendly it is uh, you know sustainable you know ask them on what basis they are uh, they are telling it is sustainable uh, reach out to their website if you are trusting that brand what are they really doing and not just that our diet have plays a great role in that too if we have to take care of our health uh, because when we talk about uh, taking care of environment uh, the environment comes with you so you know once you have to take care of your he- once you start taking care of your health the things around you will start come uh, falling into the place you know so uh, i think it it is a major concern that we should change our diets uh, we should change our uh, footprint around how we see uh ourselves as and then uh start to tell others also how it is changing your life and how it is changing the uh life of the planet so this is this is what we can really uh think of now it's very well well said uh i guess yeah so um one of the um important things i guess that is often um you know missed by so many people is that uh this plastic waste i guess uh it's kind of the same uh, along the same lines of that question is that uh you know how we plastic we we throw everything away and so we're not even thinking about the people who are um dealing with uh the cleanup of mm-hmm. uh the messes that each and every one of us on the planet is uh making and so mm-hmm. i know that you have an intimate uh uh daily interaction uh, with these people so can you give us an insight of uh the conditions that they are dealing with oh uh, yeah and so i feel uh, this is a very critical issue we should be talking about because when we talk about the people who are going to get impacted from the climate change or the environmental risks <laughs> these are one of uh, these are the most important ones we should be talking about so when we throw our waste uh, when we throw or when we um, when we consider something as waste we generally tend to forget who is going to manage this waste uh, we tend to dispose our sanitary napkin uh, condoms or food packaging without even washing it so you know these these kind of things create a larger impact around us and around the people who are going to manage this waste like i said in most if you are not going to manage your waste someone else would have to manage your waste so when you would see in your community composting is happening uh, composting is happening recycling is happening at what extent it is happening and what are they really doing for example if you are having a coca cola bottle if you are drinking a coca cola you are disposing the same bottle without even washing it so if it has to be recycled if anything has to be recycled it has to be washed and then it has to be sent to the recyclers and then it it has to be reused again so the similar thing is happening uh yes yeah, the similar thing is happening and uh, we tend to forget who are the people they are doing it so these people uh, they come from the marginalized sections of the society they don't have access to better health they do their work without wearing gloves and masks because they don't have access to all these things some some or some or the other time they don't even have, have the access to water uh, to wash their hands to they don't have a sanitizer they don't have the access to a toilet you know uh, where they can feel the uh, where they can be hygienic and you know when uh, yeah where they can feel hygienic about so uh, and <clears throat> handling this waste is a very large phenomena think about yourself you are in a dumping yard and in in front of piles of waste will you be able to uh, stand in front of it 
of course not because uh the pe- so think about the people who are going to handle this waste who are going to touch this waste who uh, who will breathe in this kind of waste so the, the the impact they'll be having every day is going to accelerate it day by day and the government which is currently working on all these issues are some or the other governments are providing incentives but we need to lo- look about what kind of conditions they are really working in for like i was talking about cesspool machines who generally cleans your septic tanks the people there are people comes with that they have to they have to come in contact with your uh, partially digested or fully digested poop so think about it how you will feel if someone would do something like that and uh, in india in india it is still manual scavenging is still prevalent in which you know generally people cleans the septic tanks or the pits where the poop is generally flushed or the sewerage uh, sewerage lines so this is the place where most of the death, deaths in india takes place and who are those people those are the already the people who belongs to the lower caste who belongs to the marginalized sections of the society who don't have access to better health and their family is is going to be at risk so you know all these things we need to look into uh, and ask yourself go around your surroundings see what is really happening what is the condition of sanitation workers uh, around around you and what are they really doing how is the, how is the waste around you is getting managed where is the plastic going so once you start answering these questions your lifestyle will automatically change because me and ann talking about uh, talking about this plastic issues will not make sense until and unless you go on the ground and see what is happening around in your surroundings Yes, I'm very glad that you brought up that that point because you know, it's just like just we we just don't realize I think each individual does not realize the impact that they are that they are making on the planet because each of us, you know, we're all of course just living in our own worlds and we kind of think that we aren't um in, you know, I guess if we can say uh um and kind of even like a, a you know higher level thinking sense a lot of us don't think that we're making that much impact in the world but just even our, just our living makes an you know a tremendous impact here you are you could be you know on the shores in belize and you you know you end up affecting somebody in moscow <laughs> or mm. you know or uh you know or well those shores in moscow but you affect somebody in moscow it could happen right or you know you're in india and you affect somebody over um in egypt you you just you don't even know um because you don't know where and how your uh you know all the plastic that is attached to you um where it travels where it goes how it, you know it can be um from the water um you know because we're all using the same water essentially mm. um uh you know goes in and out from the air to the ground continuously um so you know we're we're all experiencing all of these resources uh together and it's really a time we are in a critical um time i guess you would say the tipping point that um this issue of plastic is uh you know showing us how we treat each other um how we treat uh uh the workers that uh deal with the cleanup from each of us and also it shows our larger level of how we see ourselves um as you know a a, a society a hum- as our humanity if we want to um really make a difference and save um ourselves and our planet then we need to really start to look at everything that we are highly highly connected um you know a person that you never met in the world could be affected by uh something that you use for 5 minutes um absolutely it's, it's, uh, yes it's time for us all to think uh globally like never before in order to really make the change that we need to be making. Um and uh I don't know if you have anything uh I guess that uh you'd like to say to everyone to uh I guess uh 
uh, push them to, you know, uh, to be more environmentally, um, you know, conscious, because I, I believe we're at a critical time. Mm. I think most of the things I've already covered, but yeah, I think it's high time for all of us to think and uh, make our make uh, create our own impact in our community. We, uh, like I said, uh, we can visit our surrounding and check it out how the things are working around us. And once we are aware, you can make your parents more aware. You can make your community more aware about it. So, uh, and then when you visit other shops, uh, you can recommend the companies, you can recommend the um, street stores or anything which are doing something wrong. You can recommend such kind of things to them which are really eco-friendly. So, you know, maybe you don't know your individual steps is going to change someone's life. So, you know, I got, I also got into all this. I, ne I, I used to believe in, uh, I never used to believe in climate change. Rather, I used to feel uh, that climate change is one of the things which is anyway going to happen. So what should I do with it? But one of my friends told me, you know, we had a great interaction and that is how I got into all this. I start, I, I, I was like, even when, when I talk about we are going to plan our cities, we are into development sector, why shouldn't I be the one who should be starting all these things? Because if I don't know what are the challenges, nobody else will be able to see what are the challenges. So now at this point, I should say uh, it is, it is, I'm doing great. And uh, everyone should step uh, step up and you know uh, try to do what they can really do. Maybe not uh, regarding waste, not regarding plastics, if you can do something really for the community, for the environment in any way, it will be very helpful. Yes, I agree 120,000%. <laughs> 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 um, so I'd like to thank you, Dimple Biel, uh, for your time and insight today. And to learn more about this topic or Miss Biel, go to uh, Low Hanging Flowers or the Environmental Outlook on Instagram, and you can learn more about how you can make a difference personally on her podcast, The Environmental Outlook. If you have a passion for an unserved community, a social justice problem, or want to change minds, contact Project Good Work at projectgood.work to start your project of change today. Subscribe to our mailing list at projectgood.work slash subscribe to get our episodes and blog articles sent to you each month. Plus, get a 10% discount on any project you start always at projectgood.work. To our listeners, thanks for tuning in to Project Good, where we're focused on what matters.